how is everybody? Give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat. Hopefully everybody can see this view here where my fingers are and the white square tile is. And now there's some supplies in there. Okay, good. It looks like people are being able to see that. Um, so uh, Zentangle, I'll start at the beginning. Zentangle is a, um, a method for drawing and kind of developing our creativity that was created by um, someone named Maria Thomas and Maria and Rick Thomas. And so they created Zentangle as a way to help people develop their creativity and as kind of a, a calm and relaxing pastime um, to help you get into a state of flow. So I've been doing Zentangle now since about 2014, and I like to describe it as meditative drawing. And I know lots of people say, oh, they're not artists and they can't draw. And that's one of the things that I love most about Zentangle is that it uses pre-set um, patterns to create these beautiful tiles and beautiful pictures. And so we're going to be investigating a little bit of that today. And we're going to be hopefully making um, a tile. Now, if you don't have these supplies, um, that's okay. We can still tangle together. So what you really need is a white piece of paper. My white piece of paper here is three and a half by three and a half inches square. Um, so that's the size approximately that we'll be working in. If you don't have that measure out yet, you can just find a white piece of paper of any size and just kind of, um, if you have a ruler, you can kind of measure it out or you can sort of ballpark um, a square on your page that we're gonna be filling in. When we Zentangle, we work in smaller size, smaller sizes for a few different reasons. Um, one, it's nice to be able to start something and finish something in a short period of time. And also um, when we work with a tile, we're able to move it and turn it around as we go, which is also kind of nice. <clears throat> so you'll need a tile or something to draw on. You will need a black fine line pen. So I have a Micron 01 here, and that's what I often use to tangle. But if you just have a fine Sharpie or um, really any kind of brand of pen is okay. Even if you just have a black, um, like a black ballpoint pen, that will work too. So like I said, with Zentangle, we try to just use the best supplies that we have on hand um, wherever we are. You will also need a pencil. I have a short Zentangle pencil, but you can have a pencil of any size. <clears throat> and then hopefully we'll have time to get to some shading and if you have a tortillon, this is a rolled paper stump that we use for blending our pencil. So if you have one of those, that's great. And if you don't, your finger um, will work as well. So, so hopefully everybody has supplies or something that they can use for supplies. And we will get started with some Zentangle. So this morning I'm thinking that we're gonna do, I'm gonna teach you two Zentangle patterns. And as we go through and do some drawing, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about um, the Zentangle method. Um, and yes, you can pop questions into the chat or feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question for me as well. Uh, so Leanne, three and a half inches is the proper Zentangle size. Um, and there are also Zentangle kits that are designed for to work with students. And those are called Zentangle Apprentice and they're actually a little bigger. So they're a four and a half inch tile um, just because we find that students have or younger children have um, not the same kind of fine motor control. So they work better with sometimes a bit of a larger pen and a larger tile. Um, so we're going to start Zentangle today. And this is what I can tell that I need. We're going to start our Zentangle today by just getting really comfortable and settled in our space. Um, there are eight basic steps to the Zentangle method that we're going to work our way through. And hopefully we'll get to all eight today. And if not, I will share some information about how you can finish your tile if we don't quite get it finished by 11. So the first step to Zentangle is always to take a minute to be grateful and appreciative of um, the time and space that we have to Zentangle and maybe for some other things that are going on in your life. I also always like to start Zentangle with three nice, big, calming, deep breaths. So I would like to invite you to start there today as well. Make sure that you're, you have a comfortable seat, you're seated comfortably in your chair. Um, I also like to shake out my arms and my hands. I often Zentangle in the evenings. And 
I sometimes find that I sit down in my chair feeling a little stressed or a little bit anxious. And it's always worth my time to take a few minutes to try to just settle in at the beginning. So I'm going to take three nice deep breaths in through my nose and out through my mouth and get settled in my chair. And I'd like to invite you guys to do the same thing. And you can also take a minute to think of something that you're grateful for. So I am coming to you this morning from the ancestral unceded lands of the Kuwait Laitane. And I am always very grateful that I get to live and work and play here in such a beautiful place. Um, I'm grateful for the chance to work with you guys today and share a little bit about Zentangle, which has been such a positive thing in my life. Um, yeah, and I'm grateful that we have this Friday as teachers to connect about things that are of personal interest to us. So I'm pretty grateful that we have these Prodi days and this ability to connect, um, especially all across the province, which is pretty cool. So with that space, we're going to get started with our tangle. So step two. If you have a tile or if you've made a square and a piece of paper, we're going to put some corner dots in. And when we Zentangle, um, part of the joy of Zentangle and the um, help with creativity is that it gives us some um, boundaries to work with. And so corner dots are one of our boundaries. So you're going to take your pencil, we're starting with pencil, and you're just going to put a dot in each corner of your tile or of your square and your piece of paper. And the dots don't have to be, there's nothing special about where they are. They can be sort of even like I've done with mine here, but it doesn't really matter if they're exactly the same distance from each corner. Zentangle is a very imprecise art, which is one of my favorite things about it. <laughs> if you can make Zentangle, the Zentangle method is based on four, um, four marks. So we will be using these four, a line and a C shape and an S and an orb. I don't call, we don't call them circles in Zentangle because it's too hard to draw circles. So we call them orbs. And all of the Zentangle patterns are based on these four, um, these four markings. So if you can do those four things, you can Zentangle. So we have our corner dots. And the next step is that we're going to add a border around the edge. So you're going to take your pencil. I always like to draw towards myself. So starting at the top and drawing towards myself. And we're just going to connect our corner dots. And you can connect them with straight-ish lines like I just did. Or you can get creative if you want and kind of make a wiggly line. And it really doesn't matter if they're all the same or if they're different. So you can just kind of play around with how you want to put your border lines on your tile. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna give ourselves some structure inside the middle of this tile. And so that's called a string. And now normally in a beginner class, I would split my tile into four sections, but we won't have time to do four patterns today. So I'm gonna split it into two today and we'll hopefully we can get um, two patterns done. So I'm just gonna split my tile using a string from corner to corner. So again, this doesn't have to be a straight line. So you can start at one of your corner dots and draw a line kind of through the middle to the opposite corner dot. So you should have two sections of your tile to work with this morning. And then the next step, once we've gone there, is we're going to start our tangles. So this is where we're going to switch over from our pencil to our pen. So whatever pen you have with you this morning. 
And sometimes this can be nerve wracking when you're first starting out with tangling, because I know lots of us are used to starting things in pencil first. <clears throat> and, you know, then when we're happy with how something looks, we are okay to switch over to pen. But that's not the, the purpose of Zentangle. The purpose of Zentangle is to get us used to this idea that um, of just putting pen to the page and making some meditative and calming strokes with our pen. So Zentangle is really not about the end product, um, although it, it always turns out looking beautiful. But the point is the process and how we move our pen across the page um, and how we feel when we're sitting down in this hopefully calm and relaxing space to draw. So you're going to switch over to your pen. Um, one of the imp most important philosophies in Zentangle is that there are no mistakes. <clears throat> so even if you think you've made a mistake, I would encourage you to just kind of keep going. And it's interesting as we keep going to see um, how forgiving Zentangle is and how the patterns, even if there's a tiny mess up somewhere in there, how they come together in the end to make something really beautiful. So I'm going to show you on the back, the names of the tangles, because each different pattern has its own name. So if you have a Zentangle tile, it has the Zentangle logo on the back and some lines here. So the first pattern that I'm going to teach, that is often the first pattern, or pretty much always the first pattern that we teach in Zentangle is called Crescent Moon. So if you're interested in writing that down so that you know what patterns we've learned, you can go ahead and do that. And crescent moon, um, well, Zentangle itself is a non-representational style of art. So it means it's not, not necessarily supposed to look like anything, but sometimes the names of the patterns are kind of, um, I guess, reminiscent of what they sort of end up looking like. So you're gonna pick one of your sections to put crescent moon in. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, I'm going to start with this one here on the bottom. And again, you can turn your tile if you have a tile in any direction. And if you have a bigger piece of paper, you can turn that around too. So I'm going to start uh, in this section here. And Crescent Moon starts by putting um, sort of some half circles or half orbs around the outside edge of our shape. So I'm going to start anywhere I want along my edge. And I'm going to draw a half circle. And you don't want to start off by drawing too small with Zentangle. Uh, partly because it takes forever, and then partly because sometimes um, we want to tangle within our designs. So to, just to give you some idea, because it's not always easy to tell, that half circle is about the width of the barrel of my pen there. Or maybe, let's see, around the same width as my pinky finger. So you can put uh, a half moon shape somewhere around the edge or a half uh, circle shape somewhere around the edge of your tile. And then we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna draw another half circle a little further down, leaving a bit of a space in between. And we're gonna ink them in. So this is the first step of Crescent Moon. And we're just going to keep going. So you leave a little space. You kind of want it to be around the same space. But remember, Zentangle is never about things being perfect or exactly even. And when you get to a corner in your tile, you're just gonna turn to follow the string line. And I like to turn my tile. And you're just gonna keep going. So I'm gonna actually tuck this um, in between those two. There. And I'm gonna keep going around the edge or around the middle of this string line. And so one of the great things about Zentangle is that we end up doing these repetitive uh, motions with our pens. And that's really great for us to get into this kind of like 
zone of drawing. So you're going to keep going. I'm just going to go see if I can deal with the construction noise in my back here for two seconds. Can you not, please? Can you not make that loud sound, please? So we're going to go all the way around the edge. So when you get to your next corner, same thing, you're going to flip the tile and just keep going. And so eventually you're going to get to <clears throat> kind of back to the beginning and you'll have these lovely half orb shapes that are inked in all the way around your, your square or your tile. And that's the beginning part of Crescent Moon. <clears throat> so one of the reasons that Maria and Rick created Zentangle is because they used to do lots of um, sort of craft fairs. Maria is a calligrapher. And she said they always had people coming up to them and saying, oh, I wish I could be more creative. I'm just not a creative person. And so they created this um, method of artwork to, to show people that we are all creative beings and that we all have creativity inside us. And so it's pretty neat to see how everybody can do the same pattern and follow the same steps. And yet everybody's crescent moon or everybody's centangle is going to end up looking a little bit different and kind of like your own personal um, your own personal piece of art, which is great. So the next step of Crescent Moon is that we're going to do something that's called an aura. So when we aura, and this is a really important um, piece of Zentangle method, an aura just means we're going to draw a line around the outside of a shape that we just drew. So we're going to start with our um, half circle shapes here. And you're going to take your pen and if you're feeling like you have a shaky hand, take a second to shake out your hands again. Sometimes that helps to kind of get a little bit of a steadier line. Um, so you're going to start anywhere you want and you will just take your pen and you're just going to draw a line around the outside edge of the shape that you just drew. And we're going to keep aura in around all those shapes. So the trick with an aura is to try to see if you can make your line as even as you can around the outside edge of the shape. And you're going to keep going until you have an aura around all of your little half circles. And I have to really tell my hand to kind of slow down. My hand wants to be fast. So I find that the more I get my hand to slow down, the steadier and the more even I can get my auras to be. And I'm actually going to add, now that I look at this corner, I'm going to add almost like a little half moon. I have this long skinny corner here. I'm going to pretend that I have a half circle in the corner because I have a lot of space there. And then I'll aura that. And you'll notice that if you're able to turn your tile or turn your page, that um, your hand kind of gets used to making the same shape over and over again. And the more it gets used to making the same shape, the more even your lines will end up being. So once you've gone around all your half circle shapes with your aura, we're just going to start again and we're going to do the same thing. So you're going to put another aura 
around the outside of all of those shapes. And Now, maybe you've gotten to a space, if you look at my tile, my <clears throat> crescent moon shapes have, they're kind of bumping up against each other here. I was able to put my second aura on here, but I don't have room for the aura on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put it on anyway, but I'm going to imagine that this aura is going from behind the aura from the crescent moon across from it. And that's a Zentangle principle that's called drawing behind. And we use that a lot in Zentangle too, because our patterns often overlap with each other. And it kind of adds dimension to our artwork. So you can keep going, drawing your auras nice and even. And when you get back to where you started, you're going to add another aura. And we're just going to keep going. So we're going to kind of keep adding aura after aura until this space in the middle ends up getting smaller and smaller. And eventually, when all my crescent moons on the edge, when the edges are all touching each other, and I just kind of have this space in between that's left over, I'm just I'm going to keep auraing, but I'm just going to kind of bounce around in the middle. So I'm going to aura, but I can't get all the way to the edge of my um, my section anymore. So I'm just going to bounce and turn and bounce, and turn my tile and bounce again. And you might have some funny spots, like around the edges or in the corners, like I do here. And you can kind of decide what you want to do with them. Sometimes I just keep aura aim right to the edge. There's really no right and wrong way. And sometimes I find that every time I do a pattern, it ends up looking just a little different depending on the original shape of the space that I'm working in. Kind of how far apart I placed my shapes to begin with. So there's lots of space for just variation with our Zentangle patterns, which is fun. And something that you can do if you have these little spaces. So mine came down to a bit of a triangle in the middle here. You can ink that in if you want. You can leave it white if you want. It's kind of up to you. I'm going to ink in this corner too. And that is our first pattern called Crescent Moon.
And then, so in our second section, we're going to do another pattern. So I'm not sure where you guys are at with your crescent moons. Hopefully you're getting close. Um, if you're not quite done your crescent moon, you can have a look anyways as I teach you the second pattern. So our second pattern is called Hollyba. Many of the names just kind of have, um, well, there's a lot of reasons for the different names. This name, this pattern is actually named after the person it was designed for. So it's a last name, Hollyba. And if you're looking for more patterns, um, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of preset Zentangle patterns. <clears throat> there's a great website that I'll put in the chat box in just a minute here that you can use to kind of investigate and see some different patterns. So this pattern called Holly Baugh, uh, it almost looks like ribbons weaving or like a pile of two by fours or something sitting on the ground. So we're going to start Holly Baugh by starting at one side of your section, and it doesn't matter where you choose to start. And you're going to draw a line that comes across and just joins with another side, the opposite side. And again, it doesn't really matter where you start and where you finish. <clears throat> and then we're going to aura that line. So we're going to draw a second line right beside. And this time I'm going to make my aura a little wider though. So I'm going to try to keep my hand as steady as I can. And I'm going to end up with almost this ribbon or a board or something that's stretching across my section of the tile. And that's our first step in Hollybaugh. And now Hollybaugh is going to use this principle of drawing behind. So once I have my first um, ribbon or board on there, I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to choose another place to start. So this time maybe I'm going to start up here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a line across but when I hit the first um, ribbon or board that I put on, I'm going to imagine that this ribbon or board is going in behind the first one. So it looks like it's kind of underneath. And then I'm going to aura that again. I'm going to try to use make it about the same width as my first aura. And I kind of like to drag my pen across so that I can get a nice, um, so that it's lined up from one side to the next. And then I'm going to keep going. So that's pretty much the basics of Holly Ball. Turn my tile, find another place to start, drag my pen across, making sure that I'm going in behind every time I hit a piece that I have already put down. And you want to have uh, pieces that are going in all different directions across your section of the tile. Then some of them might hit more than one. I'm going to keep turning and adding more lines, weaving more lines in. And I'm just going to keep going until I kind of feel like I'm done. <clears throat> so sometimes Holly Ball looks nice if you have lots and lots of different lines drawn across. And some people like to leave it a little more sparse looking with lots of white space in the background. There is no right or wrong. So I'll invite you to just keep adding your holy bot in until you feel like you're happy with how it looks. And that's our second pattern. 
So this is cool, even with two, even with just two Zentangle patterns on our tile, it, it comes together, it looks pretty neat, the design. Um, I'm gonna show you really quickly the shading. So <clears throat> we're kind of running out of time here. <laughs> that was very fast. Um, so we were on step five tangle. So step six is where we take our pencil and we do a little bit of pencil shading. And pencil shading just gives some dimension to our, our artwork. And so I'll show you quickly, and then maybe this is something that you can go in um, after the workshop if you have time and just kind of play around with adding some shading onto it. So for crescent moon, one of the nice ways to shade it is to just put a little bit of graphite around the edge of your tile. So I like to take my pencil kind of on its side, so not right up and down using the pointy end, but using sort of the flat edge of the pencil. And I like to just kind of color all around the outside of the crescent moon. And it just kind of makes it look a little brighter in the middle and a little darker on the edges. And that ends up giving just a little bit of dimension to our, to our drawing. And now I have a tortillon, so I don't have to be super exact with where my pencil line goes. And you probably, you, you guys all have fingers too, so you can use your finger to blend your pencil if you don't have a tortillon. So once you put your graphite down onto the page, you can take this pencil stump or your finger, like I said, um, and you're just going to use that to sort of smudge out the graphite that you've put down. So I like to use just circular motions with the tortillon. And always so that the edge, the pointy edge of the tortillon is pointing towards the place that you want the sharper line. So we kind of want to pull the, the graphite towards the center of our pattern and not have it escape out on this side here. So that's a really sh simple shading technique that you can use for a lot of Zentangle patterns. Just kind of shading around the outer edge of your section adding a little bit of graphite and you can see that it really makes your um that section of the tile kind of stand out a little bit more which is kind of cool now the shading for holly ball you can use the shading to um to kind of emphasize this over and under nature of the pattern so what i do for holly ball is i would take my pencil and i put a little bit of graphite around the outside. I like to find the first um, sort of ribbon that I put down or the first board. And I put a little bit of graphite on the outside of either side of it. And you'll see that I'm kind of, I'm putting the graphite right over top of any of the boards that are laying underneath. And that's gonna help to just give this dimension where it looks like this board is laying on top and everything else is in behind. And then you can find you know, what would be the next board or the next ribbon that you drew and do the same thing. But this time I'm going to make sure that I don't shade over top of that very, very first ribbon that we made. And so you can do the same thing. And then with Holly Ball, you can keep going and doing this for all of, all of the um, ribbons that you put down. Or sometimes I like to just do the top few and just let the other ones sort of fade into the background. And again, you can come in afterwards with your finger or with your tortillon and just use that to sort of soften these pencil lines that we added in. And it just gives it a little bit of that 3D look to your tile. So hopefully, maybe you'll have a chance later today to go in and maybe finish up um, some of the shading with Crescent Moon or with Holly Ball there. I wanted to just show you one more important thing that we do in Zentangle, which is step seven. And we make sure that we initial our work on the front and sign it on the back because we're artists. So when we initial the front, we use something that in Zentangle that we call a chop. So it's often based on your initials. So my chop that I use is actually um, T, it's three letters, it's T-A-M. So it's the first three letters of my first name. Lots of people use their first initial of their first name, first initial of their last name. 
And you can be a little bit creative with how you want it to look. Some people really design theirs. And I like to just find a spot on the pattern to kind of tuck my chop in there. And then I also always like to put a date on the back. So we're October 22nd today. Then sign the back. Or beside if you have a piece of paper that you're working with. <clears throat> and then the very last step of Zentangle, and you can do this now, or if you're planning to do a little bit more shading later today, you can do this later too. But the very last step is to just take another minute to appreciate your work and appreciate, even if we only had about 35 minutes to sit down together today, um, appreciate that you had a few minutes to sit and calm your mind and uh, let your hand roam free over the page, which is kind of fun to do. Um, I'm going to pop in the chat box here my sort of Zentangle email. Um, if you're interested in more information about Zentangle, I teach a beginner class um, usually about once a month. So I have a beginner class coming up on November 7th, which is a Sunday. If you're interested in joining me, we would learn four patterns. And then I have a Tangle Club that I host um, once a month as well, where people who have taken my beginner classes come together and we just learn new, new patterns together. Um, so I can share with you, I'll just put a few tiles up that um, my Tangle Club has worked on in the past few months. So you can kind of see what they look like. So, Here's a tile with some tangle patterns. I have a bunch of unfinished ones here. Here's another tile. So like I said before, there's hundreds and hundreds of different um, tangle patterns out there that are really, really fun to play with. And um, give us a different look every time. One of the things that's really fun to do with Zentangle is to, when your tile is done, to flip it in different directions and kind of see which way you like it the best. Um, so I'd encourage you, if you're interested in more information about Zentangle, to send me an email. Um, and I'll also pop in the chat box here um, a website that you can go to. So tanglepatterns.com has hundreds and hundreds of tangle patterns and the step-by-step -step instructions for how to draw them if you're interested in more, um, just looking at some more of the patterns as well. Um, so thanks for joining me today, everybody. If you have any questions for me, I'll stick around for a couple minutes and you can pop a question in the chat or you can unmute yourself and feel free to ask me a question. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your pro day and the conference time. I hope you've enjoyed your tiny little taste of Zentangle this morning. Yeah, for sure. I'll put the bookmark back under here. Thanks for coming. Oops, let's see if I can get all eight steps into the camera here. Yeah, there it is. Thanks for coming. Yeah, one of the great things about Zentangle is um, it's more than just doodling, right? It's a great process to use. Good. Thanks for coming, everybody. I'm glad you enjoyed.